What is up, Smashers? We got funky music going on in the background. Not so bad, huh? Uh, like the chef, the fresh bean on the on the head. Hey, listen, we're gonna be talking about. You ready for this? Ooh, patello femoral pain syndrome. Yeah, you know what that is? That is basically a scientific explanation for I have no hot clue why your knee hurts. Yeah, you don't. You doubt me? Check Wikipedia. You're gonna be. It'll say something to the effect of. We really don't know why it hurts, but your knee just hurts. Yeah. So in other words, you know what we're talking about? Knee pain. So most knee pain doesn't come from the knee. Most knee problems aren't because of the knee. They're from ankle mobility issues and hip mobility issues, and that's it. The ankle has to be able to dorsiflex and circumduct. The hip, 360 degrees of movement. So that's my hip movement right there. I could probably do this instead. It's probably more accurate. But um, what happens is the hip loses mechanics and 99% of the time it's because the glutes aren't firing. So when you activate the hip, when you work uh, anything to extend the lower leg, it's all done by hip drive. So the problem is, is that when it's not, your thigh takes over, usually the quads, which spits the knees out forward and puts a super bad shear on the knee. So until you can engage that posterior chain, What's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up using your quads. You're gonna get, here's the two most common problems. I'll give you predictors for knee issues right now. It's that easy. Here's the two, the, the two predictors. One, if you have a valgus knee, so if your knee starts to cave in on your squats, and number two is if I can hear you land. So if you're landing like a ninja, like this, oh yeah, I see you didn't hear that. If you're like, you have no idea whether I even left the ground. For all you know, I just did this. But trust me, Travis will tell you I left the ground. But what happens is if you land like a ninja, you're not transmitting all that force to the knee. If you can hear yourself land, I guarantee your knee can feel it. It's just that easy. Man, that's a sick shine on my head today. I like that. So what's gonna happen is you need to disperse that force and, and or soften that blow so you're not impacting that knee so much, number one. Number two is you need to be able to torque those uh, those femurs, the, the femurs out so you don't shear up that knee and you need to stop shooting the knee forward. Here, I'll show you. You need to stop shooting the knee forward so you don't rely on your quads to lift the weight. Because if you don't use your glutes and if you can't turn them on, it's a big problem with a lot of athletes. I see a lot of guys and girls come into my practice and I see them all here in the, in the gym and in a lot of gyms where I get a lot of messages going, I have, knee and I, have, I have knee problems and I have hip issues. Most of the time it's not a knee or hip issue, it's just being able to activate the glutes and then getting them to stay turned on. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. All this stuff you can do at home with the exception of, uh, well actually you can probably do all this stuff at home. It's just that easy, you don't even need a gym. So check this out, this is super legit. So I'm gonna show you how to kick up your glutes the way they're supposed to. And show you the ceiling of the, uh, of the gym at the same time. But this stuff's really easy. The problem is, is that it's easy to do, which means it's easy not to do, right? So number one is a glute bridge. Everybody knows what they are. I don't want these with weight, nothing. Get your feet that far apart. So we're about two hand widths apart. You're gonna get back. Glute bridges are easy. You wanna make sure everything's super tight. If you wanna stay up, that's fine. I don't want you to, I want you to pin your, uh, your shoulder blades to the floor. You're just gonna come up. All you're doing is you're squeezing your glutes. Grab your butt or someone else's, it doesn't really matter. That's number one, three sets of 10. You know I'm always three sets of 10. Number two is kick your leg out, single leg glute bridges. So you're gonna come up and then you're gonna come back down, three sets of 10. This is such easy stuff to do. And the problem is, most people aren't doing it. They're doing all this fancy stuff. Get rid of the fancy stuff and turn on your butt. Your hip loves 360 degrees of motion. So I'm gonna show you how to move that hip through 360 degrees, kind of butter up that hip joint, that uh, femoral acetabular joint, and get the hip firing the way it's supposed to. So you can get what's called quadruped. So this is quadruped, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna bring the knee in, bring it up, and bring it all the way around. That's one rep. So you're just doing this, it's this easy. That's number three. I know I'm giving you a ton of stuff. Number four is fire hydrant. Think you're a dog, that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's this easy, isn't it fun? There, three sets of 10 of that too. This is like the best hip mobility or uh, hip activation sequence I could probably give you. Last one is this one. You're gonna get in quadruped again. All you're gonna do is bring the hip up, flatten out the heel, and just push up. Yeah, I know, it's like a little Jane Fonda stuff. It's super easy. Ain't Jane Fonda, she's better looking than I am. Well, I don't know, she's got more hair than me though. So anyway, those are those five things just to activate and turn on the glutes. I would do these before you squat, before you jump, before you rip across the field, before you sprint, it doesn't matter, all that stuff. That's five to kind of get the hips moving. Let me give you a high hip mobility because this stuff is where everybody's missing. 
you get guys like uh, like Travis over there. He doesn't count because he does Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, really did. He's really a Cirque du Soleil guy. Spun around and did all kinds of gnarly, well, I won't swear, gnarly stuff on the rings. Not stuff I could do. So you want to step into a band. Use a heavier band, cinch it up into the groin. Watch the twig and giggle bears. Get real wide. The foot's rolled out, this is the big thing. You want to keep the knee up probably about 30 degrees. You get up to 45, but nothing more than that. Grab the foot, and you're going to take your torso and bring it to your foot. That's all you're going to do. It's this easy. Pull yourself in, hunt around and scour around until you feel it really high in the hip. How long do we hang out? Yeah, two minutes. You know that. Last one's super cool. <laughs> I'm gonna try and finish this before the wide. <laughs> Last one is a great hip mobility slash hip activation sequence. And this is some pretty sick stuff. So you're gonna get in front of a, so I have a band here. The band is set. Yeah. The band is set at just about hip height. Okay, so we, all I did is take a band and put it between the rig. You're gonna get real wide. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna go under the band open up the hip and then the same thing back and open up the hip. So watch this. You're going to step under, up real wide, step under, up real wide. It's a great way to do a couple of things. One, get the hips moving the way they're supposed to. And two, open up the hip flexors and peel open that iliacus, that rectus femoris, and that psoas all in one move. Hey, that's it. I'm Trev, Smashworks, fixing hips and knees. I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Have an awesome Monday.